Hello and welcome to Youve TV. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make a prototyping breadboard station. Here it is, the final product. So let's head across the workbench and I'll show you how it's made. Okay, so the first thing we need is the top board. I'm going to use this. This is just a shelf from an old furniture unit. It's just um, about 12 mil M chipboard with a, a nice decorative veneer. So that's approximately 400 by 350, I would guess. But obviously choose a piece of wood that's suitable for your particular needs. Size isn't important, just whatever works well for you. So that's gonna be the top board. And we need a smaller piece of wood beneath that. This is just an off cut of 20 mil chipboard but white melamine surface, doesn't matter what you use, it won't be seen. So any off cut that'll, that'll fit will do. So choose the surface you're gonna use as the top. I'm gonna to have that, so turn it over. And we're gonna fix this board <coughs> roughly centered. Again, it's not important as long as you leave sufficient border around the outside for attaching switches, knobs, uh, banana plugs etc that's all you need so let's just very quickly screw this to the board beneath it so again it doesn't have to be too precise because it's not going to be seen and let's just drill some holes I'm using a, a countersink bit suitable for the screw I'm going to use so if we just drill through those going to do is basically I'm going to fit this like I say it doesn't matter too much just lined up so the borders roughly equal around the outside and screw it in place obviously two screws that will go through the bottom board but not all the way through the top board And the final screw. <clears throat> so like I say, all this is doing is lifting the top board away from the surface so that we can fix fixings to it and access the wiring beneath the board. So all the wiring can be hid on the bottom of the board where it won't be seen, keeping your top nice and clean, clear. I believe that if a breadboarding station is tidy, it's much easier to diagnose problems when, you've, when your circuit doesn't work. If you've got wires going all over the place, a jumble mess, it makes life much more difficult. So that's the basis of the board. Next stage is to put on the uh, breadboards and other equipment you want to fix. Okay, so the next thing is to lay out your breadboarding components. So everyone's different, but personally, these are some of the things that I use regularly. So I have a, a main breadboard and attached to that is my Raspberry Pi via a ribbon cable. So the intention is to fit uh, this main 
prototyping area but in addition to that separate breadboard which I will separate so it's, it's kept separate with its independent power supply uh, it's a good idea to have a separate board for certain things like power supplies and so on just so you can visually separate the circuit in front of you um, in addition to this I like to have the option to supply power to the board from my power supply unit which is just to my left here so I'm going to use some banana plugs banana sockets sorry I'm going to put one here a red one and a black one and I'm going to use some of these these are basically the the leftovers when I separated up the the individual breadboards these come in strips like this one and the these pieces are just detachable you see they have little tongue and groove joints which you just pull off and allows you to clip, clip the center pieces together to form a wider span I put a power strip as they're called down each side of the main prototyping area but that's left quite a few of these power strips left over so they're handy so what I'm going to do is I utilize them the power strips unlike the main boards which are just segments of five continuous strips of contacts the power strips are one continuous strip of contact so you plug a power in here and it's available to any of these holes along the length so I'm going to utilize that to create a power bus here for the positive and here for the negative so when I plug in my bench power supply banana plug plugs into here that provides a strip of positive and negative points to connect to so then I can just connect with a, a male jumper wire from here to the board wherever I want so this gives me the versatility of having independent power supplies I can have the bench power supply here see 9 volts 12 volts whatever whereas this little separate board has its own little power supply unit which is fed from a 5 volt, 5 volt supply which can provide either a 5 volt or a 3.3 volt supply for microcontrollers and Raspberry Pi etc <coughs> so again leaving plenty of space around the edge if you want to fit switches knobs buttons potentiometers motors you have the versatility to do that you can physically fix it the board and then connect directly to it with your jumper wires so that's the first stage lay things out get them where you think they will work for you everyone's different this is probably the orientation i'll use myself i intend to raise the uh, Raspberry Pi off the board slightly with some standoffs which we'll do in a moment little brass pillars which it'll sit on and be tightened with a screw so that won't go anywhere uh, so that's the first stage next stage is to drill the holes for the banana plugs and for the standoffs for the Raspberry Pi so let's let's measure up and see where they're going to go again it's not important it's going to be precise but you know, do the best you can okay so let's first of all see what size hole we need we just look at this closer you can see this is the banana socket which the four mil banana plug from the power supply unit will just push into so it comes with a small nut and washer so let's take those off So we need to make a hole suitable for this to slot through. So let's find a hole gauge and see what would be a good fit. Mm. Looks like an 8mm hole would be good. So we'll find an 8mm drill bit. There we go. just position mark these where they're going to go I think about an inch from the edge so I've set my little rule to 8 25 mil which is an inch and we'll just draw a little line where we want nice to be and if we work out the spacing so that they're not cramped together but still right I think so we put that one there and that one 
there that's the center holes for those two so we can move that out the way now over here let's make sure that this is this will be stuck by the way this has a, a foam sticky back back backing to it so when we peel off the backing that'll be stuck so there's no problem with fixing that but just line it up and then if we can mark where the holes are for the Raspberry Pi screw fixing points make those a bit clearer So, as I said, we're going to use some standoffs to fix this board. It's a, most circuit boards have little holes in them, which you can fix uh, little bolts to or fix them in place. What we use is called a, a standoff, which is these things here. This is a little set. This is the M2 set, to the nearest size I've got to that hole. So there's various options. We could use um, this type which has a, a threaded hole top and bottom so we could put that there and then put a screw in from the top screw one of these small screws into there or the other option is to use this type which has um, a threaded post on one end and a threaded hole on the other which would allow the board to sit on that post and put a little nut on. Personally I think the screw is easier to get out so I'll probably go with the double socket post and the sc screw on the top. So we're going to need four the same size, same length, so we'll get four of those out. So the issue here is the thickness of the board and they're quite short screws so it might be easier just to drill a hole and just to stick this in with some glue into the board. So again let's find a suitable sized uh, drill bit for that, snug as possible, looks like three and a half mil will do it, so three and a half mil bit. We'll do this first as it's so then push those out the way. So we don't need to go all the way down with these, just enough to sink. To sink that in with a bit of glue. Do. In fact, don't go too far deep, otherwise it's not standing off the board then, is it? So I should have checked the depth, but never mind. Put them in, then we can get them roughly the same height. that one standing a little bit higher so we'll drill that one slightly deeper and then yep they all look approximately the same height so that's that see a bit of glue in there left to sit with the raspberry pi screw to it that should align nicely so, um, just quickly do those other two holes. We're going to go right 
way that we have fuel for these ones. Now on the back, obviously, um, these are going to come through and need to be fixed with a bolt, uh, a nut, sorry. So, let's just see how far they come through. You see that's not, um, if you can see that. We need to recess that back hole a bit to, to allow space for the nut to be tightened. So let's do that with a larger bit. So we're going to drill through, but not all the way through, obviously, just enough. Again, they're not going to be seen, so it doesn't have to look pretty. All we want is to be able to get a nut in there and a nut spanner, ideally. So, turning it over. So, this is going to go in here, and the black one will go in there next to it. So from this side it looks nice and pretty, the other side it doesn't, so that doesn't matter, it won't be seen. Now getting nuts into these isn't going to be easy, I should make those holes bigger really. Let's have a try. I may have to widen the holes a bit more. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that, so let's take those out. And these are bigger bits. Or even just cut out with a knife, chisel, if you've got a chisel handy, that's easier. I don't have a chisel handy, so I'm going to have to use a bigger bit. some of the material beneath between the two holes if you want to it gives a bit more space for getting drivers in oops that's not very clever is it you always use the right tool for the job which I haven't done here All I want to do is break out that little piece there, so I haven't got a chisel to hand. So anyway. Let's try that again. So putting in the banana sockets, putting in its washer, and its nuts. Screwing in the, there you go, screwing in the socket. Doesn't need to be massively tight, but that's perfectly good. So we'll do the same with the black one.
you can see the principle now. So on the underside of the board is where all the connections are made for things like this. So you can solder wires onto this and all the wiring can be hidden on these margins and then brought up when necessary near the board. So that's that done. Clean up and we'll come back to you. Okay, one thing I did forget is we need to make a small hole here and here so that when we fix the power strips there'll be a small hole for the wires to come up from underneath to connect onto these two end holes. So let's do that first. Again, it doesn't have to be particularly accurate just as long as it's lined up with the plug socket. two holes. Let's clean up. So you can see underneath that they've come through the bottom board which doesn't really matter. So we'll wire those up in a moment. But for now we need to get things laid out and stuck into place. So it's I've already fitted as you can see little standoff pillars to the board with a screw on the top and we're going to position these into these four holes with a bit of glue just so they'll stay put and then if we need to take the board off in the future we just take out the four screws and lift it off so let's do that first let's get some glue i'm using this high tack all-purpose very sticky glue it's very good so just take off the top, put a little bit in each hole, not very much, just a little bit. And then that's that. So we just line up the Raspberry Pi standoffs to fit into the holes and just push it down firmly and that will leave that to set so the Raspberry Pi has what's called an extension board which just plugs in to uh, the the holes on the breadboard so as I said before the breadboard has a, a sticky back plastic backing so we're going to use that to stick onto the surface so I suggest what you do first is to line things up and um, just make a pencil mark once you get things nice and square because this glue is extremely sticky and once it's stuck it will not come off so make sure you've got a nice even gap it's not critical but if you like things straight like I do, it's a good idea to make a few pencil marks. So when you come to line it up again, once the adhesive backing's removed, it's a lot easier. So again, just take off the backing paper. You can see the cuts where I've cut off the these bits. Like I say, from experience of sticking these things down before, if you don't get it right the first time, it's not very forgiving and it'd be very difficult to reposition. So take your time and get it where you want it to be because you won't be able to move it again once it's stuck. Okay, so let's be careful. 
So make sure the surface is clean. Here's our reference marks. So let's bring it round and position the corner with your reference marks. Just putting down the edge first. And once you're sure it's lined up and you're happy with it, then gently press down firmly. And that is stuck. It's nice and level and that's not going to go anywhere. So we can plug in the Pi extension board that goes into those sockets there. Make sure everything's lined up and it's centered. It's not quite centered, but that's fine. There you go. Push that down. And that's the breakout board for the Raspberry Pi. So next step is to attach um, these things. So it's the same procedure. I'm going to be stuck just in front of these holes. I'm going to keep a, a gap between them just so we know that one is positive and one is negative. So again, peel off. I should have made marks. I didn't do that, but you want a small gap between the hole and there, and then you want to stick it down. And the same with this one. If you do get any little bits of adhesive foam sticking over the edge, it's best to trim them off now before you take the backing off. Okay, so same again. Leaving a small gap. And there we have the power strips. So the final board to go on is this one. It's an older board, it's slightly warped, so I'm hoping it'll stick down okay once it's positioned. So let's again position it. I want to have a small gap, something like that. So You can see that some of the cheaper boards, like this one, they have a slight curve to them. Sometimes they're warped in both directions, so it's not that important generally, but if you want to stick it to a board, it can be. So let's hope for the best. Let's take off the adhesive backing. be line it up with your holes sorry not your holes your position markings and just press it down as firmly as you can like so so there we have the basic construction completed the only thing left to do is to wire the two sockets to the two. So the final stage is to connect the two power strips to the banana plugs. Now there's various ways you can do this, but I personally like to use a good strong connection. I could just put wire straight into the sockets and then thread it onto the plugs and solder it, but that's not a tight connection. So what I prefer to do is to use some male header pins and if we cut, just cut two off the end, the header pins are configured to be the exact same spacing between the holes on breadboard. So if we use that as a little plug, we can then plug that into the socket, like so. And then if we 
wire these together both sets of holes will supply the positive supply and we'll do the same for the negative rail so the soldering irons on let's just get my helping hand stand and we shall onto the back of these some wires. I'm just going to use some um, speaker cable. It's quite thick so it should hold a good current so let's just cut some of that off. Um, I'm going to strip it down the middle so that we can use the red for the positive and the black for the negative. So I'm going to do to make a nice neat joint is I'm going to strip off the sheath. But I'll strip off a bit more so I can stretch it across both both wires when I solder it. So let's strip that tin on the wire. Maybe what we could do is just gently squeeze these two pins together, this side, and then let's see if we can get a solder joint there. Just connect those two together. And then connect the cable so that it is straight. Between those two pins. Like so. So what we have now is A little socket connected to a wire which we can plug into the breadboard very easily. Now I'm going to put some heat shrink across here so give me a second and we'll come back and do that. Okay so I've found some heat shrink you can hear the hot air going on in the background so this is some heat shrink sleeving sleeving sleeve so I'm just going to cut a piece uh, it's enough to cover the plastic and the joint, so how about there? Uh, so if we slide that onto the cable and then position it so it's just covering the tip of the... Don't forget it's going to shrink, so allow for that shrinkage movement. So. We'll just gently heat with the hot air gun, rotating it slowly as we go. And there we have it. Very nice, neat plug. So just a close up of that. You can see that's a nice, neat little plug which will plug directly into the breadboard. So I'll do the same for the black. So again we'll strip off the cable, twist it, tin it, If 
find our header pins. These are very cheap by the way, about 10 pence a strip. So we'll cut off two, but they're very useful. And we'll do the same again if we can. Just try and bend the pins so they're closer together. Easy to solder. And if we put those in the vise, the helping hands, and just tin those some solder. And then if we attach the wire. Same procedure, take a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Slide that on. So we'll just slightly past the plastic. Allow for the shrinkage and then do the little magic with a heat gun. These really are worth the small investment, the heat guns. They make jobs like this so easy and so much more professional than using a, a flame or a iron to try and shrink the heat shrink. So again, there we have a nice bread bun ready, bread board ready plug. So let's just zoom out, clear away some of this. So the next stage is to bring these cables through each of the holes. in doesn't matter which way they go around but obviously the red to the red and the black to the black and if we gently pull these through so that they're through the bottom I would leave a small loop so that they can be unplugged if required it shouldn't be necessary but if required so to turn the board over step. don't want to damage that raspberry pi so I'll prop something under it just to give it some support. Next step is to solder these two connections. So again leave a small loop just for future and trim off excess cable. Suggest we heat shrink this as well. So I'll use that off cut for this one. So put the heat shrink on the cable before you strip it because it's stranded cable, it's a bit easier to get the heat shrink over it once before it's stripped. So let's strip that f next. <clears throat> so, same procedure tin both the wire and the terminal is being connected with solder. And then just connect them and solder together. Now you've got a nice joint. So once that's cooled a little bit, 
slide down the heat shrink tubing to cover that joint and we shall shrink it in place. I'm going to move it slightly up a little bit so it's covering the joint before it shrinks too much. There we go. And then we have a nice tidy joint. So we'll quickly do the same for the, the black cable. In the wire it just helps them to stick together if they're both tinned the wire and the terminal you're sticking it to heat shrink on before you touch the wire it's something I always do it always means I have to redo it so heat shrink on then touch the wire to the terminal give it a few seconds to cool and then we can slip that tubing down doesn't want to go come on there you go and we can shrink that in place right so there we go As you can see, we have a nice shrink wrapped, nice and safe set of wires. Now you may find that these wires, because they came through the bottom board, may get in, it may not allow the um, board to sit flat against the floor. So I'm going to cut a little nick out of this edge here, just to let that cable sit. flat like that. If you drill the holes in the right place in the first time you wouldn't have this issue but there we go. So now we'll turn this around and there we have, let's just zoom out so you can see the entire thing. There we have the completed prototyping breadboard gives you nice firm surface to work on Raspberry Pi is fixed in position You've got your independent supply from the um, power supply and if I attach these little modules you can get for breadboards very cheaply that gives us a second independent power supply module for this board. So we've got anything on this that the bench supply will supply, 0 to 30 volts. On this, if we supply, uh, sorry, if plug in a 5 volt supply, this will give a 5 volt reel and a 3.3 .3 volt reel for microcontrollers, Raspberry Pis and so on. So as it is, it's, it's adequate, but you've got all this extra space where you can add switches, knobs, potentiometers, motors, anything you want to attach to your breadboard. But we 
which would normally fit in little holes. So bigger components you can wire from the side directly onto the board. And one of the other advantages of this is once you're building a project that's full of components and wires, and it's in the way, you just lift the board up and take it away and put it to one side and you bring it back and it's ready to use again. So I hope you found that useful. Um, in the coming videos, I'm going to show you how, how to make a wide variety of prototyping components, which would not normally fit into the small holes of a breadboard, but we're going to show you how to adapt them so you have a set of prototyping tools and components you can use when experimenting. So that'll be in the next video. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to see more, please click the video over here. Also, why not subscribe to our channel? We release videos three times a week on subjects about electronics, making things, building things, just having a good time in the workshop. So why not click the button below and subscribe? Thank you.